Charles Chaplin made limelight at the most troubled period of his career. In the late 1940s, America's Cold War paranoia reached its peak, and Chaplin, as a foreigner with liberal and humanist sympathies, was a prime target for political witch hunters. It didn't help that he had recently been cited in an unseemly paternity suit. Attacked as he was by the right-wing press and reactionary institutions like the American Legion, it seemed that America had turned against the man it had once idolized. Not surprisingly then, in choosing his next subject, he deliberately sought escape from disagreeable contemporary reality. He found it in bittersweet nostalgia for the world of his youth, the world of the London music halls at the opening of the 20th century, where he had first discovered his own genius as an entertainer. His story concerns a once famous comedian who has lost the ability to command his audience. Chaplin said that he based the character on real-life stage personalities whom he had seen lose their gifts and their public, like the clown Marceline, with whom he had worked as a boy. Clearly, though, he was also thinking of his own present bitter experience of a faithless public. The story, as the opening title says, is about the glamour of limelight from which age must fade as youth enters. The old comedian, Calvero, befriends Terry, a young dancer who has lost confidence in her talent. His friendship and encouragement enable her triumphantly to resume her career at the same time as his own is failing. Chaplin spent more than two years writing Limelight. As a preliminary, he wrote the story in the form of a full-length novel, 100,000 words long and entitled Footlights. The novel, never published or apparently even intended for publication, relates the story as it appears in the finished film, but in addition includes two separate biographies of Calvero and Terry, detailing their lives before the action of the film proper begins. What makes these biographies so remarkable is that we can trace in them a great deal of extended autobiography, as Chaplin quite openly introduces episodes from his own life and those of his parents. Just like Chaplin's own father, Calvero is devastated when he discovers his wife's infidelity and drifts into alcoholism. In the novel, Calvero even dies in the same hospital where Charles Chaplin Sr. died at the age of only 37. The character of Terry, the young dancer, was equally clearly based on Chaplin's mother, Hannah, although with reminiscences too of Chaplin's first and never forgotten love, Hetty Kelly. Claire Bloom, who plays Terry, remembered that in rehearsing her, Chaplin was always recalling gestures of his mother or of Hetty and the clothes that they wore. With this strong underlay of nostalgia, Chaplin was at pains to evoke as accurately as possible the London he remembered from half a century before. In this, he was helped by the great Russian-born designer Eugène Lurier, who remodelled a set on the Paramount lot to look like a Victorian London street. A permanent setting of a theatre at Archeo Pathé Studios was decorated to look like the Empire Theatre, London's grandest music hall at the start of the 20th century. For the climactic scene, he planned a ballet in which Claire Bloom, not a dancer herself, was doubled by Melissa Hayden, a star of the New York City Ballet. Since the coming of sound films, Chaplin had always composed his own music scores with the help of arrangers. Exceptionally, the music for the ballet, 25 minutes long, although it was reduced in the final film, had to be composed in advance. The limelight theme was to remain one of Chaplin's best-loved compositions, and in 1972, 20 years after the film's first release, he and his musical collaborators Ray Rash and Larry Russell were awarded a belated Oscar for Best Original Dramatic Score. The beautiful 20-year-old English stage actress Claire Bloom was chosen to play Terry, and Chaplin's son Sidney was given the secondary male role. Perhaps it was a comfort in these difficult days, and an element of the nostalgia, to have his family around him. As well as Sidney, his son Charles played a comedy policeman in the ballet. Chaplin's own half-brother, Wheeler Dryden, is the other clown. Wheeler Dryden also played the doctor, and Chaplin's new young family made their screen debuts, Geraldine, the eldest, Josephine, and Michael. Even his young wife, Una, doubled for Claire Bloom in two brief shots. Though Chaplin's public life was beset by problems, at least the shooting of Limelight was trouble-free and was completed in 55 shooting days, an exceptional standard of economy for Chaplin's feature productions. 
The premiere was, appropriately, held in London on the 16th of October, 1952. In Chaplin's absence from America, open official hostility escalated to a point where he decided not to return to what he called that unhappy country. Thereafter, he made his permanent residence in Europe. At that moment, Chaplin believed that Limelight would be his last film. Happily, it was not. But if it had proved so, this exercise in nostalgia and family autobiography would have been a fitting conclusion to his creative life. <laughs>